Hi everyone, welcome to today's video where we'll be talking about respiratory system. So, in order to understand the respiratory system, you have to know the circulatory system first. Remember, the job of our respiratory system is very simple. It is to bring oxygen into your body and to remove carbon dioxide from your body. Oxygen is used by your cells to perform the functions of life. As your body uses oxygen, your cells will produce another gas known as carbon dioxide. Too much carbon dioxide can be toxic, even deadly. For this reason, it is important that your body have a system to get rid of it. So, the main organs in your respiratory system are your lungs. Blood that enters the blood capillaries surrounding the lungs has higher concentration of carbon dioxide. So, it is known as deoxygenated blood. The carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the blood capillaries into the lung and then expelled through the nose or mouth into the atmosphere. As you breathe in, the oxygen will diffuse across the blood capillaries into the blood and make the blood oxygenated. The blood will leave the lung via pulmonary vein back to the heart and the heart will pump the oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. And as the blood reaches the tissue capillaries, the oxygen will diffuse into the tissue, which means into your cells, and will be used for respiration. And I will talk more about respiration later, but generally, respiration is a process of breaking down the glucose in your body to produce energy for all functions of life. What happens during respiration is that carbon dioxide will be produced, which means that the concentration of carbon dioxide in your tissue is higher than the tissue capillaries. Therefore, the carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the cells into the tissue capillaries and the blood will be transported back into the heart and then into the lungs and the carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the lung into the atmospheric air. Now, this is how the respiratory system works. First, you breathe in the air through your nostril and mouth and this will wet and warm the air so that it won't irritate your lungs. Then, the air will travel through your pharynx down to your larynx which is your voice box down to your windpipe which is known as the trachea this trachea is supported by c-shaped cartilage rings which will keep the trachea open permanently to receive air then the trachea will further branch into two bronchi and each bronchus will further branch into smaller bronchioles and the lungs contain millions of air sacs known as alveoli so remember each bronchial will end in alveoli and under the lung there's a dome shaped sheet of muscle known as diaphragm the lungs are protected by the rib cage and in between the rib cage there are intercostal muscles and the lungs are located in the thoracic cavity so the space above the diaphragm is known as thoracic cavity let's take a closer look at the 
lang. And you see that alveoli are thin walled air sacs. And it is surrounded by a network of capillaries. This is deoxygenated blood, which is coming to the alveoli and oxygenated blood away from the alveoli. Okay, so this dense network of blood capillaries will provide a large surface area for the rapid diffusion and transport of respiratory gases, which is your oxygen and carbon dioxide. If we take an even closer look at each alveoli, you will find that the wall of an alveolus is very thin. It is only one cell thick. And why is this important? This is to allow the diffusion of gases across the membrane to take place easily. And the blood capillaries are very close to the alveolus. They are also one cell thick. And here, inside the blood capillaries, we have red blood cell. So remember, the capillaries coming to the alveoli contains the oxygenated blood, which means they have higher concentration of carbon dioxide. And this carbon dioxide will diffuse from the blood to the alveolus to balance out the concentration. And the oxygen in the atmospheric air will diffuse into the blood because there is a high concentration of oxygen in the alveoli but not in the blood. And the oxygen are eventually picked up by the red blood cells to form oxyhemoglobin. Okay? Okay, now, let's say in the exam, if they asked you what are the characteristics of alveoli that are adapted to carry out rapid gaseous exchange, and this will be your answer. So, first, would be very thin walls, which is one cell thick. Second would be a large surface area. As you can see here, there are many alveoli in the lungs. And third will be a moist respiratory surfaces on the inner surface of each alveolus. Gases will dissolve in the fluid before diffusing across the alveolar wall. Alright? Alright, now let's have a look at the mechanism of breathing. During inhalation, the intercostal muscle will contract. And this action will cause the ribcage to move upwards and outwards. 
okay at the same time the diaphragm muscles will contract and the diaphragm will lower and flatten these two actions cause the volume of the thoracic cavity to increase and therefore the pressure inside the thoracic cavity will decrease and at this point the pressure of atmospheric air is higher than the pressure inside the thoracic cavity therefore this will force the air into the lungs okay now let's have a look at expiration which is also known as exhalation so what happens is actually the opposite of what we have discussed just now first the intercostal muscle will relax and this will cause the rib cage to move downwards and inwards at the same time the diaphragm muscle will relax and the diaphragm will curve upwards to become a dome shape and these two actions make the volume of thoracic cavity to decrease and therefore the pressure inside the thoracic cavity is higher than the atmospheric air and this will force the air out of the lungs all right okay this is the end of the video thank you